Mr. Wendy Williams is the gift that keeps on giving. Listen, just when I think I'm not going to talk about this person anymore, this dude goes crazy. Does some ape shit shit that even... I, listen, I say this all the time about a lot of clips of stuff I watch. Go watch this. I'm telling you right now that the Friday, October 23rd, 2020 show of Wendy Williams, which is still on the air, which is still on YouTube in its entirety, which baffles me even more, and we'll get to that, go watch it now. You will not regret it. I have not seen somebody that drunk on TV, allegedly, in, like, ever. <laughs> like, maybe we're counting Paula Abdul back in the day on, you know, American Idol. I'm sorry. She was, she was, she was on pain pills or something like that. She had a, she had a backache. She's a dancer. There's something wrong with her. But Mr. Wendy, oh my God. So let me just preface this by saying, I know Mr. Wendy, he's had a lot of problems. He's had a lot of issues with divorce, has admitted having substance abuse issues. I used to have substance abuse issues. I've been sober since I was 22, which is so much fun, by the way. To get sober at 22 when all your friends are just kicking up the party. It's just like, oh, yeah, you want to go to a bar? Do you want to go to, ooh. Yeah, he's the one who gets like all violent. I don't know. I don't want to invite him because I'm afraid he's going to see a beer and stab me in the face. That's what he said the last time he had a beer. I don't know. I just don't want to be around him anymore. I don't know why he acts like that. I had the weirdest reaction to drinking you will ever have in your entire life. I'm telling you right now. I wasn't just a mad drunk. I was an angry, psychotic Hannibal Lecter. I will eat your face drunk. And this is after like two beers. So A, I had a low tolerance. And B, my psycho gene just woo through the roof. So I say, if you ever really need a war fought, you find me and my biological bloodline and you fill us up with Jack Daniels and vodka and drop us in Afghanistan, we will get rid of the problem in a minute. In five minutes. Normally, we'll be crying like pussies, but you fill us up with the alcohol, and I guarantee you we will not feel crap, and we will do horrible, horrible things to people physically. I just guarantee you, and emotionally. We will just cause all kinds of scars. You'll see uh, an Arab guy somewhere like, <laughs> not only did he bite off my toes and shoved him in my mouth, but he also said that the ugliest person he's ever seen, even for Afghanistan. That's so horrible people. And then this one woman who's related to him came up, and she stuck her finger violently in my anus, and then was just spitting vodka into my eyes. Are you the most they're demon people. So Mr. Wendy has Graves' disease. And listen, I don't know much about Graves' disease. Apparently, it can make you do this. It can make your eyes get really wide. It can make you uh, kind of loopy and stuff. But so can Jack Daniels and so can Sirac. Uh This is what I think happened. I, listen, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm wrong. And I, I went back and forth about doing this because I really don't want to pick on anybody. Okay, it's total bullshit. I love picking up people. No, but you know what? Mr. Wendy has no problem throwing anybody under this butt. This camel-looking dude with a bad wig will get on its ugly-ass TV show, sit there, talk about everybody and their mother, their father, who's gay, who's not gay, somebody's substance abuse issue, even after they've had all their troubles. So now you get no pass from me, none whatsoever. And boy, was this the best one ever. So the show starts out with Mr. Wendy wobbling out because like I said, I think what happened was somebody didn't get the box of wine in time. Like the, all, you know, the, all the merch and this, the good stuff that's sent to the office. I think like, I, I think I just picture Mr. Wendy's studio, just a little hidden compartment. It's like, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. How you doing? How you doing? I'll be right back. Y'all, I'm going to get ready for the show. I'm going to go to the special bathroom and she like goes in the tank and there's like a bottle of vodka. Mama <laughs> mm, like, okay, I'm ready for the show. Uh, let me just tuck. I'm ready. I'm ready for the show. So, I just think she's got them stashed all over the place. Like, there's probably light fixtures askew and shit like that. Like, everyone wants... Like, you know, I saw Mr. Wendy the other day getting ready for the show. Why were they, like, reaching up into, like, the light fixture? I was, I was fixing the light. I was, I was fixed. There was something right. It was blinking, and I'm also an electrician. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is pretty much what happens. So, Mr. Wendy comes out, and I haven't seen the Wendy Williams show since this whole corona thing started or whatever, and comes out, and there's, you know, it's like, Hi! Ah, and of course, the audience has to do that fucking train sheep thing, which I just, as a, an adult, a grown adult, don't you feel stupid going, how you doing? How you doing? While you're wearing a mask. And it's all her staff, and she just holds them hostage, so who knows what's going on. So she's like, hi, this is wel welcome to my show. Wel welcome, welcome. And then she proceeds to just do this thing of saying nonsense, slurring, and staring at you. And scaring the crap out of her poor gay co-host who's sitting there fully aware something is going horribly wrong. When they cut the camera to him, it is the best thing ever. So she starts off with this like, so, how are you doing? Everything, I, yeah. Me, uh, Brick, someone called me. I was lying. I was lying on the floor of my office. I bet you were. I believe that completely. I believe they were like, Mr. Wendy, wake up. Five minutes of showtime, Mr. Wendy. <laughs> what? What? Why? Why are you people bothering me? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I gotta get one more. 
As I'm taking my medicine from the graves. My gra Oh god. I be uh, my graves is kicking up. Hold on, hold on. My grave my graves is bad to the woo -hoo. Okay, let me get some banaka to cover this shit from my graves and I'll be right out there. She wanders out and she sits there and she goes like this and she's she <laughs> I'm gonna be nice like she today. No, I'm not. Goes like this. It's like uh so I'm lying on my floor in my street wig. You know, and the poor gay guy, they cut him right away. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know everything you're talking about. Love you, girlfriend. Get the camera off me. I'm afraid. I'm going to pee. And so, so she goes, yeah, my street wig. You know, not, it's, it's not the regular wig. You know, it's the street wig. When you're laying on your face in a pool of your own vomit because you had a lot of Ciroc and Hennessy mixed together, that brown liquor kicks up, that, that you wear a street wig. The street wig is the thing you get off the 47th Street hooker when you wander in the streets aimlessly in the middle of the night after you've been listening to some Jody Wiley. I don't even like Jody Wiley. And you're walking around town in just your panties for, you know, it happens. And then you wander upon a, a hooker. She all like, aren't you Mr. Wendy Williams? And then for some reason, you don't even know why. You just end up going, bah. She's like, why are you bad? Bah. She gets all scared and pee herself. And she drops a wig. And that's a street hooker wig. And so you take it home and put it on. And dance to some Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. So I'm lying on the floor. And the phone rings. Then she has to tell us how a phone rings. Because none of us know. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Yep. No, really? I thought the phone went... Hey, drunk bitch! Hey, drunk bitch! Hey, drunk bitch! Ring, ring. I'll pick it up. And you know who it is? This is literally what she starts to do. Rick, Rick, Rick Ross. Is Rick. He called me. I like Rick Ross. Okay, guys. She's like, I do too. I was, yeah, I, I like Rick Ross, too. So I was sitting there, and he said he wanted to do something. And, of course, the audience doesn't know what to do, so they're trying to help her out. They're like, ooh, no, no. You know when you know somebody from the show, gay guy. You know when you know somebody from the show. Okay, but you don't know them, but you you good. Like, you know, you know them, how you do it, you know. I like Rick Ross. I know. I love Rick Ross. I love. It's time for shoe camp. She's just all over the place at this point. No, I'm sorry. She shows his mansion. She's like, so that's his mansion. And tell me if I'm wrong. It's got 12, 12, be 12 rooms. 12, 12 bedrooms. We talked about the 12 bedrooms the other day. Y'all didn't see shit. We talked about 12 bedrooms the other day. And it's got... It's got 12 um, bathrooms. <laughs> she keeps doing this shit. I can't believe they paying me for this shit. <laughs> you all so stupid. Okay, no, no, no. So they got 12 bathrooms. <laughs> I just... just <laughs> they 12 bathrooms. And in my mind... That's the best part. In my mind, Rick Ross, anybody who's got a mansion like that, has lots of mansions. Right? The gang got to cut to him. He's like, somebody go to commercial. Somebody go to commercial. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I like the swimming pool. And that tickled the shit out of Mr. Wendy. He laughed the shit out. Swimming pool. <laughs> swimming pool. I like I like how you call it a, a swimming pool. Yeah, it's, that's not just a pool. It's a swimming pool. <laughs> it's a swimming pool. <laughs> so people can swim. <laughs> in the pool. I see. I thought you was gonna call it uh, uh, a pond of hot lava dipped in caramel. That's what I thought you were gonna say, but you didn't say that. You said swimming pool. I got motherfucker. Let this motherfucker say it again. Swimming pool. I was in the swimming pool. <laughs> you sissy ass bitch. I love you, bitch, but you a sissy. All right, shit. <gasps> so now we are gonna go shoe cam. What you got today? And she looks at the DJ who's like, doesn't even know what to do at this point. He's like, uh, do you, oh, you want to do like a shoe off again? Let me see what you got. I'm wearing, I'm wearing, my feet is bad. I'm, they're bleeding. I was walking the streets again, wasn't I? What are you wearing? Let me start playing the shoe cam music. It's like a harp. 
And this just distracts her completely. He loses it. Mr. Wendy is just fixated on the music. It goes, and it shows his like shoes, and she's like, and she starts doing this shit. Tell me I'm wrong. I like that music. I like that shoe cam music. No, don't show his shoes. It's not it's his shoes isn't important anymore. To the music with just no shoes, just music. White girl, white girl co-host, who I keep hostage. Bitch, I got a gun on you. White girl, Suzanne, dance and model right now. <laughs> Why not? Everything's batshit insane. Let's do it. Dance. And the poor white chick, who's like the warmer upper of the crowd, is like, <laughs> doing this shit all uncomfortable. That's right. I love the music. You sometimes when I'm at home and I'm out of a bo bottle of something, medicine, <clears throat> medicine for my, my graves. When I'm out of it, I think of shoe cam music. We're going to be right back with some overexcited gay guy talking about some reality show I pretend I watch, but I really don't. Stay tuned to the Oprah Winfrey show. No? What? To the, oh, stay tuned to the Wendy Williams show. Do I know her? Is she good? Listen, here's what I'll say about the whole entire thing. It is a train wreck. I can't believe. Doesn't Mr. Wendy still own his own show? How could you let them put that show up? If I would have seen that shit after I'd be, I'd be like, take that show down. I will sue everybody. I'll fire this whole staff. Hire them, fire them again. Hire them, fire them again. Get the fucking show off the air. It's the most embarrassing thing ever. The show is still up. Somebody hates your ass. Somebody hates your ass to have that show up. Right away. Hate your guts. And let's be real. I, I mean, anybody who knows somebody with Graves' disease, is this normal? Is this really? I, I, come on. I could smell the vodka, practically. Allegedly. I don't know for sure. I'm just guessing her and her best friend, you know, Jose Cuervo, went out, made a night of it, and she showed up the next day as a professional, kind of, sort of, and he walked in and he put on his wig, and Mr. Wendy was really ready to go, but not quite ready to even, because he had to form sentences and stuff, that was hard. So, but this is the best show ever. Go watch the October 23rd. I'll promote the hell out of that show. I'll see it every day. I, I want to know the producer who's off the sideline. That guy should be fired. Listen, I'm an evil motherfucker, but I'll tell you one thing right now. If I was working for that show and that that dude, was, Mr. Wendy, was paying me bread and I saw him in that state, this is me behind scenes. Okay, he's done. Cut the show. Cut the show. I don't care. Go to commercial. So I fucking have you killed. I will have your children. Go to the commercial. Go to fucking commercial. He's half in the bag. What are you talking about? No, don't just sit there. What, what, what are you doing? You know, the executive producer said they're like, no, fuck, keep going. Matter of fact, do we have any? Somebody run to the liquor store really fast. That Asian one where they're always really hostile towards you. Go get some. I want to see her cry and vomit. Come on, we can make a party of this. She, she's fainted before. Ratings gold if she pisses herself. Come on, let's do it. Hopefully, she rips her dick out. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, at Wendy Williams, uh, you know, Graves' disease can be a bitch, but uh, I think she's got a couple of issues she might need to address. And you know what? I hate to say it, but karma. You talk a lot of crap about a lot of people and you get really low down and dirty with it. Even after you should have had a change of heart because of your own circumstances, bite you in the ass once in a while. Especially after your head's rock.